Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. In March of 2016, 15 Hiki no schools from Hawaii shared a transformative experience at the Student Television Network Convention in Atlanta, Georgia. Here is their story, as seen through the eyes of one school, Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School from Lihue, Kauai. So we started going to these conventions from you know 2004 when it started, but you would see the same schools, you know, you would see the same type of, of media programs that went, and then once we hit, you know, uh, that era of Hikino, uh, that PBS Hawaii uh, program, in which students are getting hands-on training, you know, teachers are getting trained uh, to produce quality work, quality journalism. Good afternoon. I'm Nicole that's when we really started to see sort of like the boom in Hawaii as far as you know how well the Hawaii students were doing. I don't think I would have done as good as I done at STN without the training Hikino has given me. It may be hard training but it's it, it's worth it at the end. Hitting the Hikino standards really helps with hitting the STN standards because with Hikino they expect you to put out your best and Whatever you do, you can learn from Hiki No and that whole process and take it out to what you do at STN. You putting, you're putting your best foot forward and you're doing all you can to make that video as great as you possibly can so it can place. Our class prepared for STN by starting practices early in the year. We started in September and we held about five practices, I think and it gave us a chance to work, to figure out how each other works and to figure out how the competition might feel like if we were actually there. Our schools are strapped with, with financial burdens as, as it is and so, you know, we don't receive any funding from our schools to attend. Uh, everything is raised by our efforts or parents pull it out of their pocket and so we fundraise all year long. We had 29 people going, so we had eight chaperones and 21 students going. In addition to the, the money that we have to raise, of course we need the support from our parents. There was just no way that I would be able to do what needs to be done for us to go on this trip without the support of our parents. We have car washes, we have bake sales, we have golf tournaments, which is one of the biggest fundraising event of the school year, along with a big breakfast um, as well. And then when we go to the convention, you know, coming along as chaperones and taking vacation time to work. Well, at the airport, when we're getting ready to go to STN, we're all wide-eyed and fresh-faced and well rested and everyone's saying bye but everyone's saying hi to the new big thing so it's kind of like everyone's jittering with excitement and everyone's like oh my god we're going guys <laughs> By the time we got there, most of the schools had already, you know, checked in, and so we were one of the late, the later, later schools to, to check in that night. And it's just a flurry of activity. It doesn't matter if you've been there for two years prior to that, and this is your third year at STN. You're excited the moment you step into that hotel. 
you can just feel it. There's just electricity that is there. It was very overwhelming to like go from Hawaii to Georgia, mainland, and be a part of something like that because there's a huge amount of schools that come over from across the nation to compete in the same things that you're gonna compete in. There's thousands of students and they're all working towards the same thing that you're doing. And they're all interested in the same kinds of things that you're interested. So it's both competitive, but it's also really cool because you get to meet new people and you get to learn from professionals in the industry. For me being this, my first STN, my impression of this was more of nervousness than being excited because you're around all these strangers and it's in one hotel so it's a lot more crowded than your usual hotels. I've never seen something so high, so big and structured that way because right now the biggest and tallest hotels that we have right now is the Marriott in Lihui. And that's not nearly as tall as the one in Atlanta, Georgia that we went to. Bright and early the next morning, the chiefest students dive headfirst into a competition that has earned its ominous title. Our first competition is the Crazy Eights competition, and it's eight hours of craziness. <laughs> There's two different teams. There's the news magazine and their short film. We had eight hours to produce a news magazine. Before the competition starts, we know that we're gonna get a topic and this year was science and technology. And we spent like the first two hours actually just Googling things on what we can find a story and calling people. And the stories took a really long time to find. So we had a really small amount of time to um, put the whole stories together. And so you add the complexities of trying to get stories in a location that you've never been to with trying to just find any good lead, you know, in this, in this place that you've never been to. It just adds to the, the complexity of the whole uh, contest. In Crazy 8, for the short film category, they normally give you a topic and a prop. So this year, our topic was True Measure, and we were given a six inch red ruler that we had to use in our video, and I had to show up in our video. We did our story on a homeless girl who was jealous of this girl who's more wealthy than she is, and she's always mean to her. But once she realizes that the homeless girl was homeless, her and her friends kind of felt for her. For us, it took about an hour to think of the story and plan it out. So after that, you go and film. There's boundaries on where you can go in Atlanta or around the, where the hotel is. So we've never been, well, I haven't been to Atlanta before and I don't know where everything is. So we had to just go and adventure and find a place to film. And then after that, you edit. Our editing takes place in maybe the last couple hours, depending on when we get the stories. And it takes place in this huge ballroom and it has all of the students in there. And you would see a lot of like, oh my God. There'd be a lot of frazzled people and a few calm ones, but you can tell that they're kind of clenching everything. And in the last minutes, Everyone's screaming at each other. We're all like, come on, we need to get this done. So it's really stressful. That's when like all of the nerves come out and we're all just exploding. Because if we miss the deadline, we're all going to be really sad. And there's a lot of tears from me because I'm dramatic like that. Deadlines are deadlines. They're hard. They're fast. And, and if you don't make it, sorry, you know, um, good luck next year. But. It's, and it, it's, sometimes it's a really tough pill to swallow for students, especially if you've worked on it for eight hours, 
and you run into maybe a technical glitch at the end with your laptop or your computer that doesn't export it quite in the amount of time that, that you want it to or something happens or you run into some other you know, glitch that's out of your control. A lot of students and schools are in the same ballroom editing with you or along beside you and you just see some people finish or some people are like breaking down, having a mental breakdown. And <laughs> it's just really stressful. 15 minutes. I was a complete and utter wreck because it was just intense. You can feel their tension, you can feel their stress, and as a parent, that just magnifies by 10 times. I feel that I had butterflies in my stomach. At times I couldn't watch, but I wanted to watch. Well, we did make our deadline, and we had maybe a minute or two to spare, and it's crazy because there's a whole lot of students just standing in line to turn in their video. So they had to like push people away and say that, okay, yes, you made the deadline, you have to go on the side to celebrate and stuff. So yeah, it was good that we made the deadline. So after day one, where Crazy Eats is finished, and uh, you're able to relax a little bit, not really. Your emotions just flare up again on day two because it's an exciting new day of competition, and it's the day where the parents or the chaperones can't say anything to the students. I'm on the anchor team with Callan Wachi and Nipua Canales. Basically what the anchor team does is they give you a hard copy of a news story which this year it was on the Civil War and we had three hours to produce a video and turn it in. And we've never ever done anything about history. Even Taylor was saying, why are we doing things that are so old and stuff like that. I was really thinking that we weren't going to make the deadline even if we had three hours. I think it was 45 minutes before the deadline, I decided to go out already. To go, to go find a spot. And I found this spot right above where we were sitting. And so I told Taylor and Napua, hey, I'm gonna go up there to see if that's a good spot for our anchor segment. I walked there and I set up the camera and I could still see them, because I was looking down, I could see where, like, what they were doing. And I could see them still producing the script and I was just getting so nervous at that point. Like, I had the camera set up but no anchors, I have, nothing, I have nothing here to edit or to submit. From the moment that we finished our script and the anchoring, um, we had maybe five, 10 minutes left until our actual project video was due. So we're sprinting, like we're sprinting for our lives up to Callan. And that was when things started getting really tough. And, Controlling everything was really hard. So we started rolling and that's when everything fell apart with me. I started to cry because we did about 15 takes and we didn't get them right. She just was bawling. Like she just, she stopped and she, she just cried on Napua's, Napua's shoulder. And I was like, okay. We're not gonna get this done. We failed, we failed everything. Guys, I'm sorry. And that's when things started getting better because Napua had me, Callan had me, and we all just hug, hugged it out. And that's when it works. And that's when things start working. And we got it to take after I finished crying. And after that, it was like relief everything was good at that moment because even if we didn't make the deadline i still had that one moment where we started going up the high road again we came out stronger and we came out more confident in what we were doing The most important thing about STN is like getting to know people better and learning. 
because I've improved so much from our first STN practice with uh, my PSA team to the way that we worked and got our story done at STN. We've gotten a lot better. We've gotten faster and um, got better at thinking of ideas and stuff. And I've just gotten to know them better personality-wise and as friends. My role in the team was mainly finding the base of the idea so we could build up upon it and find the correct idea. So I threw out all these ideas and even though it may be kind of nervous for me because thinking, is this going to help, will this work, I just have to throw it out there. And sure thing, I thought of one, uh, my partners thought of others, we combined those and we created the PSA. And then right when we ended, we're waiting for the editing time to come up. Uh, our pen pals from the different school came asking for uh, if we had a certain battery because their battery died and they needed a battery. Turns out we actually had the correct battery. We lent it to them and they finished the video in a time that was allowed. So we were happy for them and they were happy because they finished on time. I think it's just part of that feeling of Ohana and, and that you know, that commitment that you have to yourself, but also to the people around you. The STN convention in Atlanta was about so much more than competing and winning. It was about making human connections. And to that end, Kevin Matsunaga devised a special project to help his students bond. On the trip, when we got to the airport in Lihue, we gave out these cards to, the, to all of our students and we gave them one at a time. There's a person on that card and you kind of have to watch them and follow them all day for that day and you have to write something positive about that person like following that topic and what it, how they acted or what they did that was really nice for another student and how they helped just in general. You don't know who wrote that about you. You're really happy that they think highly of you or they think of you in that way and it brings everyone closer together because now we know that someone really thinks good thoughts about us. When I first got the cards back, I read all of them like word for word and I didn't skip anything and I felt like really touched for because of all of the positive things that they wrote or drew about me in those cards. I think we all bonded because you know we we're all put into the convention, we all had to share a room. We were in groups, we had to work together for our competitions. And so we were forced all to cooperate and I think regardless of that, we were all just happy to be in each other's company. This whole STN experience, you know, it forces them to have that human connection with others, you know, um, and doing stories about people, you know, work with each other and do that on a face-to-face -face basis instead of, you know, on their phones. I mean, it's, it's a huge skill that is slowly dying because of our dependence upon electronics. Once students hand in their completed projects, their fates are in the hands of the judges, a panel of industry veterans who rank each entry based on a predetermined set of criteria. No one but the judges and STN officials know the outcome until the award ceremony on the last day of the convention. Being from Hawaii, on the closing ceremonies, we all agree to sit together. And we all try to sit in the same section of the ballroom so that anytime any Hawaii school wins, we just go crazy for each other. And so, and we're all competing against each other, but you know, our, our tie being from Hawaii, it doesn't matter, you know, th those, those rivalries don't matter at convention. It's just about, you know, cheering for Hawaii. And so far we're the only state to do that. We hear the word aloha like on a daily basis probably, and we try to incorporate that into our daily lives. And if someone's booing you, it doesn't feel good, but if someone's cheering you on, then it's like you're happier and you feel better. So we all try to cheer each other on, and even if they 
if another school from, from Hawaii beats us, they're still our family and we still cheer them on because they didn't do anything wrong. They just beat us. We are all from Hawaii. We are all as one team. There's like 15 schools here. We're gonna just come, we're gonna be here as a team. We're gonna be for each other. We're gonna be there um, when everybody wins an award. The 2016 Anchored Team Contest winners, starting with middle school. As soon as they said the word anchoring category, I grabbed everyone's hands that were near me and I held on to their wrists. I may have hurt them a little bit, but I was really nervous because they didn't call our names for honorable mentions for the two of them, third and second places. So I was like, okay, are we not gonna place? So then at that time, I was kind of like getting ready to cry. <laughs> I was like, okay. What did I do wrong? What did our team not do that another team did? And when and they the announced first place, first place the middle school anchor contest is Chiefest our Kamakahela whole class stood up and we started screaming. And I'm starting to jump everywhere on everyone. And you can hear everyone in Hawaii yelling. It's not about winning, but winning is really nice. And it just feels good to know that your video got recognized and it plays. A PSA, or public service announcement, is a message so used to raise awareness. So it went through the honorable mentions, second and third place, and I was like, oh gosh. So then at that point, we were all like, it's okay, it's okay. Because <laughs> we didn't think that we were going to place. So we were just like, oh, we're probably not going to win. And the middle school PSA contest winner for 2016 is Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School. We were really surprised when they announced this as first. I was really thrilled, but also kind of, it was kind of surreal, because I didn't really expect that. Our class entered nine different competitions and won or placed in eight of them. And it was probably one of our best showings at STN that we've ever had. And it was among the best STN showings ever for Hawaii schools as a whole. A total of 34 awards was garnered by schools from the Aloha State validating Hawaii's reputation as one of the lead states in digital media. Um, and I think we all kind of share that vision that we want to show that, hey, you know, we're this tiny you know, group of islands in the middle of the Pacific, but we can do just as well and sometimes even better than our counterparts on the mainland uh, that might have more opportunities or resources. Um, but it's a special thing that, that we have here in Hawaii. Well, I'm proud of the other Hawaii schools for placing because I think the main thing during the closing ceremony was just showing the Aloha spirit because when we were there, all we were doing was rooting for our state and we were clapping loudly whenever a Hawaii school won. And I think it wasn't more so about winning, more what was it for just sharing the Aloha spirit. We travel to STN to compete, and that is definitely some, that's one of the reasons we go, but that's not the main reason that we go. It's not for winning, it's not for placing. It's many wonderful life lessons that you can learn from this challenge and everything you do in the competition because you learn how to handle stress, you learn how to work with others and cooperate with them. You also learn how to kind of take control and act like how you're supposed to act Getting along is really important because later on in life I'm going to have to know how to work with my coworkers and other people. I think it's really important for us for, to be Hawaii strong and I think it's really important for, us, for people in the state of Hawaii to know what we can do. And with even Hiki No, I think that's one of the things why we're so good at what we do. We produce really good stories. I think our training that we've had with, with PBS Hawaii, our teachers, our very passionate teachers, has given us opportunities that not, not a lot of kids can have. It's just showing you the power of digital media and storytelling. I see all the different skills that our students gain from you know, working on a story, from the research that they have to do to the contact that they have to make, the interpersonal skills that they have to establish and maintain with the people that they're interviewing as well as their partners and, and, and other people that are connected to their stories, to the writing that's involved in their scripts.
and then using technology to go and capture that story and put it together and to tell a story that makes sense and can impact people, that should be on a test. That should be how we measure our students. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.